Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. First thing I want to do um, before we begin is I want to say a big thank you to uh, all of my subscribers. Um, I've recently just reached the 1000 subscriber milestone uh, and that's all thanks to you guys. So thank you very much for your support and uh, long may it continue. Um, additionally, uh, I also want to say a, a bit of a big shout out to uh, Motor Rev, um, who's also um, just achieved the same, uh, the same milestone. So, um, well done, Craig. Uh, good to see you doing well, buddy. Um, if you haven't checked out his channel, what I'll do, I'll leave a link below. Um, get yourself across there. He's got some really good content. Anyway, let's crack on with the job. Right then, what we're going to do in this video, um, as a bit of a follow on from the previous, if you haven't seen the previous video, go check it out. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to bleed up this clutch. Uh, those of you that joined me last time will, uh, will have seen me replace all of this um, so that we've got a working system. All we need to do is bleed the clutch up. So here's a clutch, slave cylinder, master cylinder. Obviously we need to bleed them up. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to replace this broken gear shifter. As you can see, it's completely snapped off. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll pull that apart shortly. Uh, I'll do the clutch first. However, first thing I'm going to do is really really quick and easy job. I've no idea what's happened on that one, but that's junk. There we go. Looks better already, doesn't it? That was the, that's the easiest job I'm going to do on this bike. Right then, let's crack on with the clutch. Right then guys, what I'm going to be using uh, to bleed the clutch is one of these cheap cheap Chinese, uh, cheap Chinese hand pumps. Um, I've mentioned this in a previous video that I did uh, when I bled the clutch on my VFR. If you haven't seen that video, what I'll do is I'll pop it up on the screen right now. So you can uh, pop over there and see uh, see how I did it. And that was a bit more of a how-to. This one, I'm just going to quick run, you know, do a quick run through. So pop across to that video and have a look at the, uh, the how-to. And um, I'll, I'll explain a little bit about uh, this tool and where I got it from. There's a link in the description to that video as, as to where I got it from. It's only like 12 quid, so it's well worth picking up. Anyway, what I'm going to do first is I am going to... Um, I'm going to top up the fluid in the clutch. Let's remove the spacer. And the little rubber gasket. Pop them down to one side. Okay. Just gently top it up. I don't want to go crazy. Spill it everywhere. Right, I've deliberately gone way over the max because I'm going to pull some fluid through into the system. Okay, so what I need to do is obviously I need to keep an eye on the fluid level because as I dr uh, as I suck it out through the clutch uh, slave cylinder, the level will drop, and I don't want it to. Uh, I don't want to empty the reservoir because if I empty the reservoir, then I have to start the whole process again. So take the little cap off the off the bleed nipple. Pop me eight mil spanner on, and then just quickly set up my tool. Dead simple. It's just. Couple of hoses to clip together. Make sure it's still working. And if I let go, it should drop. Yeah, there we go. Right, okay. So we're all good. So what I need to do, pop that end onto the bleed nipple. Crack it off and pump and we should get fluid coming through as we are 
This will be the old fluid out the line. As you can see, the fluid level is dropping in the reservoir. What I'm going to keep doing is keep pumping till such time as I'm getting clean fluid, which I am. Okay, let's pop that down. Check the reservoir, right? Okay, it's between the upper and the lower. So what I'll do is I'll top it up so it's at the upper. What I prefer to do is I prefer to pour, like decant my brake fluid into this little jug. Because I find it much more manageable that way than trying to pour it in using the retail, using the retail um, bottle. Because the last thing you want to be doing is spilling brake fluid everywhere for obvious reasons. As you as you'll well know, it's highly corrosive for paint, so we don't want to get that everywhere. Okay. What I want to do, pop the cap off the oil filler. I should be able to see the clutch operating, which I can. Just inside there. Nice. Okay, so. It's a good feeling, it's a good feeling from the lever. Pop that cap back on. All right, good feeling from the lever. Yeah, that feels nice. Right then, that's that first job done. All I've got to do, pop the little rubber gasket in, pop the plastic spacer in and refit the cap. Awesome. And there we go. It really is that easy. Pop the cap on the nipple. Job done. Took me less than, what, two minutes probably? Cracking job, right. Next thing I need to do is uh, have a look at this broken gear lever. Now, I've got a brand new one. This came from uh, M&P. Uh, M&P, I'm sure people are familiar with. It's a, it's a, uh, Motorcycle factors, they, they supply parts for all sorts of all sorts of machines. Um, and this is this is an OE pattern part. It's not a, not a genuine not a genuine item. So, uh, but you know, it it looks pretty good. It looks looks to be the same. So what we'll do? Although this one does seem a little bit thinner on the arm, but I, I can't see that being a massive drama. And this rose joint here doesn't have the. Uh, doesn't have the rubber boot on it so we could probably um we could probably remove the boot from here and fit it to this one i can have a look at that uh once we get it off so first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna crack off the um crack off the nut on the selector uh, the bolt sorry on the selector let's crack that off <laughs> And take the bolt all the way out because whilst they do clamp sometimes there's a recess in the actual rod itself which the bolt sits into to prevent it coming off so I'll take it all the way out and then I'll know that it's not going to interfere come on oh, there's annoyingly long bolts Yeah, right. What you'll notice I've done just on here with the scriber, I've just marked a line there and on the rod so that when I come to put it back together, I know that the height for the gear lever will be correct. And then just wiggle it off. Ah, there we go. Yeah, you can see, like I was saying before, there's a that recess there, that bolt would have been in that recess. Uh, it was that way, wasn't it? It would have been in that recess, so it would have, it, it, without, if I hadn't taken it all the way out, that wouldn't have come off. So, right, next thing is uh, the two bolts holding the rear set to the chassis.
and that's it off. Right, what we need to do is crack off this, this bolt here that holds the foot peg itself to the rear set. For that, I'm gonna pop it in the vise. Right then, gang. So I've got the uh, got the rear set in the uh, in the vice. What I've got, I've got a small breaker bar and an Allen bit. I'm going to try and crack it off. And if it feels like it's uh, if it feels like it's going to have a problem, I've always got my uh, blowtorch to get a bit of heat on there. But hopefully, it'll come out without too much problem. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, she's there. He's there, no problem whatsoever. All right, there is a there will be a little keyway in order to locate the foot peg to stop it turning. Obviously, otherwise it will just turn in normal operation. And then what I'll do is I'll show you that in a second. Uh, there you go. You can see the two keys either side. Let's pop the. Uh, broken lift uh, lever off and there you go there's the two keys and what they do is they engage into the corresponding keyways in the uh, in the bracket so obviously when we when we put it back together we need to make sure it's the right way up put it up that way it's going to be upside down so <laughs> we need to make sure that we uh, get it in that way uh, so that it's all good. What I'm going to do before I uh, go any further, so I'm going to pop all of this into the parts washer, give it a good, give it a good clean up, and I'll bring it back in once I've uh, once I've cleaned it. Okay then. So that's the uh, that's the parts given a bit of a spruce up in the uh, in the parts washer. Now what I need to do is I need to remove the broken the broken uh, gear lever from the rod. Now, what I need to do is uh, crack off this lock nut. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that the lock nut at this end is a left-hand thread. Okay. And then, what I need to do, tighten that end up. And what I need to do is I need to get this to come off. Annoyingly, it's wanting to come off at the opposite end. Right, I think, I think what we need here is a little bit of WD-40 because there's a little bit of corrosion in there and it's obviously Come on. yeah I'll get a w bit of WD-40 in there and uh, we'll let that soak in I don't want to use any heat on it if I can because I want to use this rubber boot um, on reinstallation of the new one so I'll get a bit of WD-40 in there and then uh, I'll leave it for five minutes and then I'll bring it back Okay, I gave it a bit of a bit of a dose of uh, WD-40, so it's been in there about five minutes or so. So let's give it a twist and oh, look at that! <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Did exactly what I needed it to do. Spot on. Right, let's give it a bit of a clean up. Right then, what I need to do next is get this rubber boot off of the rose joint and then fit it onto the new part. Shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, quite a lot of rust coming out of there. So I'll give this a good clean out inside uh, and then uh, I'll fit it on the new part. Okay then, rubber little, uh, little rubber cover is off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a bit of grease in around this in and around this joint, front and back, just to make sure it's 
got a bit of lube and it should uh, keep it in better condition than that one right then next thing i've got to do is this is going to be a challenge is i need to get this over this rose joint this one is actually marginally bigger than the uh, than the standard one and obviously it's a bit slippery as i've just greased it up so bear with me while i uh, force it on she is and there we go job done right next let's put a touch of grease on the uh, on the threads there and thread the new one back on to the post. That is a f***ing right hand thread. Okay, so I hit a bit of a pitfall and uh, it's one you do encounter on occasion when you uh, buy pattern parts. This rose joint, that thread, is uh, a conventional right hand thread. Now the, the thread on the rod was a left hand thread as was the rose joint on the original gear shifter. So you can see that they weren't going to be compatible. So I had a little bit of a think and what I've done is I've removed the rose joints from the original gear shifter I removed the rose joint from from here and what I've done is I've swapped them over so this did have a right hand thread on it's now got a, a left hand thread from the original gear shifter this is a conventional right hand thread and now the right hand thread end of the rod is now available for me to fit that so it was a bit of a faff um, but I got there in the end. If nothing else, it gave me the opportunity to put loads of grease inside this rose joint. So as you can see, it's nice and nice and loose. There's loads of grease inside there, and there's uh, there's no there doesn't feel to be any lateral movement. All the movement is in the joint itself. So I'm happy with that. I'm a little bit disappointed in the fact that this didn't uh, this didn't fit in the first place without me having to bodge it. Uh, and I say bodge in the loosest sense of the word uh, I overcame that's what we'll call it well, I overcame right so now what I'll do I'll put this boot back on now that I've finished messing around um, and uh, yeah we can uh, we can carry on with the rebuild so yeah that's uh, that's one thing worth bearing in mind if you're going to use pattern parts uh, I could have sent it back that would have meant a delay and I couldn't be bothered so anyway let's uh, let's get it back on there we go look it's going straight back on no worries whatsoever I'm gonna put it around about there round about there lock it off okay that's all done let's uh let's get it back on the bike right before i uh, go to the effort of putting it all back together what i'm going to do is i am going to pull apart the actual peg itself pull apart the peg itself and just give it a uh, give it a bit of a clean and a grease up Massive hammer. Just get a just get a punch and just knock that pin through. Okay, there we go. And 
And as you can see, it's pretty buggy in there. So what I'll do is I'll give it a give it a good clean up. That bush should come out. There we go. Come up there. And the spring. Give it a good give it a good clean. Get a bit of grease in there. That should keep it going for a, a good few more years yet. There we go. Happy with that. Let's just give these parts a good scrub. Still got some uh, cleaning fluid on them from the uh, parts washer, so that's helping. Bush. And lastly, the spring. All right then, let's get it all reassembled. So. Slippery fingers. pin through and then lastly just a case getting the spring clip back on wipe off all the excess There we go. All right then. Next thing we want to do is we need to assemble the gear lever onto the foot peg assembly, like so. Feels nice and smooth. Next, making sure we got it the right way up which we have is except fixing it onto the rear set what I'm going to do I'm going to go and grab some uh, blue Loctite because I want to Loctite that into position before we fit it together okay Loctite 243 thread locker let's pop a little bit on the threads, come on, here it comes. That will do it. Don't need to go crazy with it. We want, maybe want to get it off again one day. Right, again, making sure it goes on the right way up, which is that way. Pop the bolt in the hole. Screw it down. Do a three hands here. OK, 
Okay, let's get her into the vise. Now, I did look through the manual and could not find anywhere a uh, torque figure for this bolt. So I am going to give it a couple of white knuckles and pull it tight. I reckon that will be more than enough, especially with the thread lock on it as well. Okay, so there we go. We've got, oh, that feels really, really nice and smooth. No, no funny noises at all. So happy with that. Right then, let's get it on the bike. All right then, what I'm gonna do, like I did with the bolt holding the footrest onto the rear set, little bit of blue Loctite. I did give these a bit of a scrub with a wire brush. that one and a little bit on that one okay All right then. Whilst I was in the manual, I did forget to look at the uh, torque setting for these. Uh, but what I'll do, I will go back, have a look and through. I'll just nip them for now. I'll go back and have a look. And I'll come back and talk them later on. Okay, so let's pop this back on. And that is in the same place it was before. Obviously, there may be a little bit of adjustment required. As you can see, the gear lever is pointing right down, but at least the lever's in the right place. So what I'll do is I'll have to crack off the two lock nuts and adjust the rod, which will bring the lever back up into the right place. It's way off at the moment. Okay. Okay, what I ended up having to do in the end was I actually had to pull the linkage apart and uh, the marks that I made, um, I had them lined up again. Uh, I pulled it off, rotated it ever so slightly. I think I turned it uh, about one notch and that was enough to bring it in. Basically what happened was I ran out of adjustment in this because this rose joint is much longer than the one I had previously. So it was throwing the setting out massively. So yeah, it, it was it was recovered just by moving moving the linkage one, one notch round on the, uh, on the teeth. Anyway, got there in the end. All looking good. The, the bike, um, as it stands now, with the with the exception of the screen, is actually rideable. Um, I do need to fix these exhausts because uh, they're ever so slightly pushed in on both sides actually. Um, but I've got new uh, I've got new rear hangers, 
because one of them is bent. Um, new rear hangers, um, but that'll be uh, that'll be a job for another video. Uh, but yeah, um, we're getting there with this. Um, obviously, the cosmetics are going to be way down the list. I'm probably going to have to strip apart the forks and rebuild those. Same with the brakes. Um, I think what I'm going to do for this uh, for this puppy next though is get her outside, give her a bloody good wash because uh, it's absolutely bogging. Yeah, I'm going to get the uh, get the jet washer out, get in there, give it a good clean up. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, we got there in the end. There was a couple of little hurdles that we had to overcome. You know what with the uh, the, uh, the pattern part not fitting correctly, but we made it work. Um, made it work in the end. Anyway, thank you very much, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now.